Okay, this is installment five of our playing around with the Digitrack Zephyr Extra DCC system. Uh, today we're going to play with two things. Uh, one is using a jump throttle, and two is consisting more than one engine in a multiple unit setup. So first we have the jump throttle. What I have here is a basic, uh, happens to be Bachman branded DC throttle. Uh, this is the type that just puts out a, a plain DC voltage on its output, not one of the fancy ones that has PWM control. Um, there are two connections on the back of the Zephyr for two of these throttles. Uh, you have jump one here and jump two right next to it and then there is a ground pin right in the center so to connect one of these throttles you connect one wire to, to the jump one pin and the other wire to ground and if you hook a second one up it connects to jump two and also to ground so that is the output from the DC throttle which also needs power it cannot run without a power connection. You could use a battery to provide that power. In this case it needs a, because of the way that this particular throttle is made, it's hooked up to the AC uh, wall outlet. Now, the second step is to assign a locomotive to the jump throttle. There's a button right here on the Zephyr. It's marked jump. If you press that once, you notice that the jump light goes on solid. That indicates that jump throttle 1 has control of the buttons. If you press the jump button a second time, it will start to blink. That indicates that jump throttle 2 has control of the buttons. At all times, the direction and throttle control of the base unit is always uh, still controlling the locomotive that's been assigned to the Zephyr itself. Uh, and likewise, when you're cycling through here, um, the jump throttles will stay in control of their own assigned locomotives. So, to assign a locomotive to the jump throttle, you cycle it until the one you want to control is, is indicated. Here we have the solid light that says jump one. And then this works exactly like assigning a locomotive to the base unit. You're going to press loco, type in the uh, address that you want to assign. We'll say 5278 which is my uh, NW2 locomotive right there. Press loco again. And now the jump throttle is in control of the uh, NW2. So we'll zoom around here and you'll see as I increase the throttle it'll start to move. I can control the speed and I can reverse the direction and control the speed. Okay, now what we're going to do is set our jump throttle locomotive to oops, slowly moving right to left. And we're going to hit the jump button again, move over here. We have control of this guy, and I'm going to show that we can run him the other direction. Back and forth. And most particularly, you'll see that the, I mean, you can see them. Change direction here. There's some little bits of trouble with control. But you can see the light going on off there. Now, if we stop this guy and bring him back. And we'll park this guy where you can see his headlight. Maybe. We will move 64, 6, 6, 64.11 and by switching the jump button we will change the headlight on our other locomotive. And of course you can't see that. Put it in reverse. 
we go. Now, should be able to see the headlight going on and off here because we have hit the jump button and we have 5278 in the dashboard. Nevertheless, the throttle still controls 6411. And that's the basics of jump throttle control. So next up we will look at consisting two locomotives together and show how that works. Okay, uh, a couple of things to point out about the uh, jump throttle are important to remember. One is, is that the Zephyr is using the voltage that's coming out of the throttle in order to decide what speed setting command to send to your locomotive. And why this is important is that some of these cheap uh, throttles uh, don't exactly send out a zero voltage uh, when the throttle is set to zero. This one in particular does not. So I've discovered that on this particular one, when the direction is set to this way, which I have marked counterclockwise here because of the way my layout is designed, and the throttle is zeroed out, it actually stays at zero until you get up to about a, a throttle setting of about 10 here. And now you can see the uh, locomotive moving slowly. Turn it down just a little bit, it stops. If I flip the switch the other direction, you'll notice that even though the throttle is at zero, the locomotive is moving slowly, and that is because there is a slightly above zero voltage coming out of the out of the throttle. So that's something you want to be careful of. It's uh, it's manageable if you are aware of it, and of course you could adjust or fix your throttle to give you zero voltage when the knob is turned all the way down. I've had this throttle taken apart three or four times and messed around with it, so it's possible that I've uh, got it out of whack. Uh, and it's possible that, that one fresh from the manufacturer would not do that. The other thing you need to remember is that the Zephyr remembers the jump throttle setting, uh, the address assigned to it, even when you uh, uh, turn off the power, even when you disconnect the jump throttle itself. And one of the things you can find is that if you use one session, you use, do one session and you use the jump throttle and you have it assigned to a particular locomotive and then you shut everything down and you forget to dispatch the, the address to take it off, you come along the next time and you decide you want to run that locomotive uh, with the main address uh, and you can wind up in a situation where uh, the Zephyr still thinks that the jump throttle is trying to control it, and even if, especially if it's unplugged, it may be getting some random noise voltages off of uh, uh, just out of the air on that input, and it will actually, uh, or it will see a zero voltage, and it will actually stop the locomotive because it thinks that it has two throttles controlling it. And it's trying to send commands from both throttles. Uh, normally, when you do this, you will see. Uh, when you try to assign the locomotive to the main setting, as I'm about to do here, 5, 2, 7, 8, loco, it'll ask you if you're trying to steal it, uh, and you'll have to hit the loco button again in order for that to happen. But I've discovered there are occasional ways that you can cause this to uh, accidentally uh, fall into this state. Unfortunately, I can't remember any of them right now or I would demonstrate it. Okay.